It's 2005. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith has just hit theaters and I'm not in the theaters watching it. That's because I wasn't fully exposed to Star Wars just yet. The only time I was exposed to Star Wars was when my neighbor and I would constantly skip to the end of Attack of the Clones. That's it. But everything soon changed when I got Revenge of the Sith on DVD and proceeded to watch it with my older brother and his friend. I instantly fell in love. Eventually, I watched the original trilogy and checked out The Phantom Menace for the first time. The rest is history. I became as big of a Star Wars fan as almost anyone. The most shocking part though? My love for Star Wars began with a Star Wars prequel movie. Revenge of the Sith. And yes, to this day, I love that film. But now, here we are. More than four years after the release of Disney's first Star Wars film, Star Wars The Force Awakens. And the end result of this new Star Wars trilogy could not have been any more disappointing. I'm Andrew Ken, aka Sven Sully, and this is how Disney ruined Star Wars. Way back on October 30th, 2012, Disney bought Lucasfilm from George Lucas and with its purchase, acquired the rights to all things Star Wars. Since that moment, everything changed. Star Wars became full on Disney with a lot planned for the future. By 2014, Disney made it clear that everything outside of the six main films and the Clone Wars TV series would now be non-canon. Obviously, fans hated this decision, but that wouldn't stop Disney from moving along with their plans. Around that time, the cast was announced for Episode 7 with several unknown actors like Daisy Ridley and John Boyega joining the team, along with cast members from the original trilogy returning. And then on December 18th, 2015, Star Wars The Force Awakens was released. I wasn't too pleased the first time I saw this film in theaters because it felt unoriginal and had way too many questions left unanswered paired with cringy dialogue. But over the last four years, I have developed a little soft spot for the film and consider it solid. It looks fantastic, has good humor, gives us a great new character in Kylo Ren, as well as finally reuniting the characters we love so much from the original trilogy. But most importantly, it's entertaining, and that's what I mainly look for with Star Wars. Hence why The Phantom Menace has remained as one of my least favorite Star Wars movies to date because it's boring. But even though I have warmed up to The Force Awakens, my problems have not changed. Anyway, two years later we got Ryan Johnson's attempt at continuing the Star Wars saga with Star Wars The Last Jedi. You know, the one that everyone seems to hate the most. Yes, this movie has issues. Yes, Rose was awful. Yes, Luke wasn't the same Luke that we know and love. Yes, that Leia scene was just... uh. These are understandable complaints, but I feel like most of what people hate about The Last Jedi revolves around minor problems. How much of a significance is Leia's scene really? Getting straight to the point, there are some things I like and things I don't like. An unpopular opinion of mine is that I like The Last Jedi more than The Force Awakens. I like the look of the film more and its unpredictability. Snoke's early death was shocking and Kylo goes full on madman. And don't get me wrong, while I like both The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, these movies aren't nearly as good as episodes 3, 4, 5, and 6. Sure, they're well made. Both films are rather disappointing though considering the standard that I'm used to. But I'm not here to talk about The Last Jedi. I'm here to discuss the film that came directly after it. So let's get right to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Where do I start with this thing? I saw The Rise of Skywalker twice, the second time coming a month and a half after it premiered. And I was very generous towards The Rise of Skywalker in my first review. But after giving it much thought and seeing it for a second time, it's absolutely my least favorite Star Wars movie. A film that feels so completely unattached from the other eight episodic films that it's about as forgettable as it gets. J.J. Abrams' vision from The Force Awakens has been a race, which I guess we can somewhat blame on The Last Jedi, but regardless, that's not a good excuse for why this movie turned out the way it did. A phrase that I hear a lot coming from people's mouths so often when talking about The Rise of Skywalker is, well, it's better than The Last Jedi. I liked it because it 
made up for the mess that The Last Jedi created. Again, yes, The Last Jedi does have some problems, but one major plot hole that every fan of The Rise of Skywalker loves to ignore is the inclusion of one Emperor Palpatine. I'll touch more on that soon, but let's begin with the first hour of this movie. It's a complete mess. When I saw The Rise of Skywalker a second time, I counted a total of six planets that we visit in the span of an hour with our main characters. And this whole first hour is just a game of cat and mouse. Kylo Ren chases Rey to Pasana, Kylo Ren chases Rey to Kijimi, Kylo Ren chases Rey onto the First Order ship, Kylo Ren chases Rey to Kif Beer, and Kylo Ren meets Rey on Exegol. The film moves around like a pinball, and we never get a moment to slow down. And as much as I disliked Rose in The Last Jedi, it was upsetting to see her as an irrelevant background character in The Rise of Skywalker. Oh hey wait, we're introduced to a few new characters to replace Rose? Psych! Nah, we don't have enough time to develop them, but why would you even bother introducing a few new characters in this movie and not utilize them? Janna was introduced an hour into the final film of the trilogy, but we don't care, it was like Disney panicked last minute and threw together a couple of Rose replacements hoping fans would like them more than Rose. Something else introduced in the first hour of The Rise of Skywalker that bothers me is force healing. Ugh. Not only does this create a ton of plot holes, but it's such an eye roller and just feels lazy. There's no need for this to be in the movie, and I know it's in The Mandalorian too, but at least Yoda's species are seemingly very powerful beings. With Rey, it's just plain dumb and irritating. I wouldn't say Leia's inclusion was mishandled, they did the best they could, but the way her character went out was just underwhelming and weird. People complained about Luke's death in The Last Jedi, but he was projecting himself across the galaxy. Leia just dies because she touches Kylo's heart? What? I know Carrie Fisher unfortunately passed away and they couldn't do much with her in The Rise of Skywalker, but come on, you could have made her send off so much better. Also, that's what turns Kylo good? Again, what? Ugh, I'm going to save my breath and stop talking about it. But now, I get into my main problem with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The ending. Gosh, do I hate how this movie ends. Again, it feels lazy and last minute. There's no creativity, thought, or desire to make a competent ending. It's just a ton of BS for the sake of having Palpatine back to make up for those who hated the first two Disney Star Wars movies. And oh my god, people love Palpatine's inclusion because, well, he's the most powerful Sith Lord ever and he's awesome. But as far as I'm concerned, the man is still dead. He died in Return of the Jedi. Having him as a clone in this movie invalidates Return of the Jedi. Fans will say he could have cheated death. Okay, if you want to use that argument, I guess Voldemort can still come back too, right? Imagine how Harry Potter fans would feel if a new trilogy was announced with all the returning characters with a cool, mysterious new villain and then by the third film, it was revealed that Voldemort returned AGAIN? This whole plotline of Palpatine creating Snoke with Rey being his granddaughter and if she strikes him down, she'll become the leader of the Sith, which by the way, I haven't mentioned that Rey is now a Palpatine. <laughs> And when her and Kylo refuse to side with him, he sucks their souls? And Palpatine uses that to become OP, sends a huge bolt of lightning through the sky, disrupting the ships flying above? All of this is madness. The second time I watched The Rise of Skywalker, I laughed hysterically at the ending. It's so bad it's funny and feels like a cartoon. Palpatine doesn't come off as a smart villain anymore. Now he feels like a meme. An unintentionally funny moronic villain. I can't even fathom why Disney thought Palpatine in this form was a good idea and a lot of fans loved it. I do think for one, people who love this movie probably hated The Last Jedi or both that and The Force Awakens. And secondly, I feel like over time, fans will dislike The Rise of Skywalker more and more. They'll see through its cracks. Actually, I guarantee if Palpatine wasn't in this movie, many fans wouldn't like The Rise of Skywalker. If the removal of one character who was barely in the movie to begin with is enough for you to go from liking the film to disliking the film, 
chances are it's probably not a good movie. But wait, there's more. Here's what I also hated about Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker's ending. Predictability. It's extremely predictable. Kylo Ren's arc was predictably the same as Vader's and therefore it's meaningless to me because it's just a copied arc from a much better trilogy. I loved Kylo in The Last Jedi because there seemed like real potential for him to be the main bad guy through and through. Who says you need a bigger bad guy than Kylo freaking Ren? Why does he have to turn good? Do people forget that Kylo isn't a Sith Lord? He doesn't need a master. He can fully operate by himself without question. What you could have done is have Rey kill him. Maybe that frees his force ghost, a ghost that was manipulated by by Palpatine's spirit the whole time? I don't know, something like that. But they didn't go in this direction, and with Palpatine's inclusion in the final film, we saw the same character arc twice in Star Wars from Vader to Ren. The Knights of Ren. I thought maybe they'll finally get their moment. They were kept as a big mystery in the first two movies, and maybe, just maybe, they'll get their time to shine. Huh, <laughs> oh wait, that's, that's it? They are in the movie for like five minutes and Kylo kills them instantly. Wow. Prequel characters. I hate how Disney ignored some major opportunities to bring back old characters in ghost form. I'm not talking about Leia, Luke, or Han. I'm talking about characters from the prequels like Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Mace Windu. Apparently they filmed a scene with them included in the original cut of the movie, but Disney decided no, and opted to make them force voices instead. For me, that's just not good enough. This was the final movie of a nine film saga, the most popular movie franchise of all time, Star Wars. They said episode nine would tie all nine movies together, but I did not notice a single mention of the prequels in The Rise of Skywalker besides old Jedi voices. I don't understand their decision not to include the ghosts of Obi-Wan, Anakin, or any of the Jedi from the prequels at the end of the movie. Yes, episodes one and two aren't good, that's fine, a lot of people didn't like the prequels, but I have a hard time Time believing people did not like episode 3, or at least most people. I hate how fans always associate episode 3 with episodes 1 and 2 bogging the film down. It's not perfect, but nonetheless, I think it's a great movie. And for that reason alone, they should have included Force Ghosts from the prequels because at least episode 3 was good. And come on, who wouldn't want to see Ewan McGregor or Samuel L. Jackson again in Star Wars? And not only were there no characters from the prequels, but there wasn't any prequel music either like Duel of the Fates, a song that's better than anything from the three Disney Star Wars movies along with the two anthology Disney films. I actually like most of the prequel music more than what we had in any of these movies. Rey and Kylo's kiss. Don't even get me started. JJ didn't want it. Disney did. This was terrible. Just terrible. It's just there to get more butts watching The Rise of Skywalker because people apparently love romance. Yet, I didn't notice a single ounce of romance brewing between Rey and Kylo in episodes 7 and 8. They were always on opposite sides, never fighting for the same thing. A completely dumb decision on Disney's part. Oh, and uh, wait, there's also a line said by Rey at the end of the movie stating her last name is now Skywalker? I could say so much more, but I've stated all my main points. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is my least favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah, I said it. I dislike it more than episodes 1 and 2, and why is that? Well, it's simple. There's not a single memorable moment. Not one. Ray, Finn, and Poe run around for an hour, which feels like a waste of time. Kylo Ren was ruined, and Palpatine should not have been in this movie. In Episode 1, I really like both the pod race and Duel of the Fates. In Episode 2, I like Jango Fett, the Planet Camino, and the Coliseum finale. What's there to like about The Rise of Skywalker? The only thing I can think of is the return of Harrison Ford's Han Solo and Billy D. Williams' Lando Calrissian. After that, nothing. As far as I'm concerned, the Rise of Skywalker is not canon. It feels so separate from any other film in the nine movie saga that I can't help but to think it's not canon. As for the prequels, they feel more canon than this. While they aren't perfect, they all feel like the real stories that came before the original trilogy and part of George Lucas's vision. The creator of Star Wars, in case you forgot. Not Disney. We have the introduction to young Anakin, the beginning of the Clone Wars, and finally Anakin's turn to the dark side. In Episode 9, Palpatine randomly appears as the main bad guy but was never mentioned in Episodes 7 and 8. It's not pieced together well at all. 
The whole movie feels like a last minute panic attack trying to please fans as best as possible, especially the ones who hated The Last Jedi. My recommendation to Disney in the future is to let their creators make movies without constantly looking over their shoulders. The point is, let the people who you hire do their jobs. Don't do their jobs for them. If a large company puts their ideas first before their directors, in this case both Colin Trevorrow and J.J. Abrams, that causes a lack of trust. When this happens, movies suck. The Mandalorian is great because Disney let Jon Favreau have full control and get to work. And what do you know, season one was awesome. Hopefully they learn their lesson and the next Star Wars trilogy is much improved. I can spend all day, even all week, talking about why I don't like Disney very much in general, but I can save that for a potential video in the future. Thanks for hearing me out guys, of course if you feel the same or different from what I had to say about the rise of Skywalker, comment your thoughts down below. And as always, if you are new to my channel, click that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay safe and have a fantastic day, guys.